Okay. In the previous video, you learned how to take your radio raster mapping data and turn it into an image. Whether it's an image of the moon, Jupiter, or one of the calibration sources, you now have an image, you have it in afterglow, you've adjusted the brightness and contrast settings to bring out fainter structure, such as an airy ring. If it's a bright source, you can bring out the airy ring around it. So the next step is to measure the brightness of your source, whatever it may be. And this video, we're gonna do two things. I'm gonna show you how to measure the brightness and it's in kind of an arbitrary unit. And then I'm gonna show you how to use your calibration source to calibrate the brightness and put it into a physical unit, the Jansky. So two parts. So the first part is the actual measurement and how do astronomers measure the brightness of a source? There are a variety of ways, but the simplest way, the most commonly used way is something called aperture photometry. So here I have an image of a source and you see three circles. The innermost circle is the aperture. We pick its size, the radius of the aperture to contain most of the brightness of the source. Ideally, we stick it in that little gap between the source and the first airy ring. And what we'll do is we'll add up everything in here. Every pixel value in here, we'll sum it up. Now, when we do that, we get the brightness of the source, but in each pixel, we're also getting background. Often in the radio, the sources are fainter than the background. You get a lot of background emission just from the Earth leaking into the telescope. And we don't want to sum that up. We don't want that. We'd want just the brightness of the source, not the source and the background in the aperture. So to take care of that, we measure the background level. We do this with the annulus, and that's these two circles out here, the space between them. Now, we pick the radii such that they're out beyond the first airy ring. So there's not much out here. There may be a little bit of flux just randomly in the annulus, but our algorithm is pretty smart. It ignores if you have any sources or stray flux in here. And it's very good at measuring the background level, the typical level of the pixels where you don't see any emission. Once we know the background level in each pixel, then we go back to the aperture. And as we're summing all the pixels, we subtract the background level off of each pixel. So we're actually only summing up the brightness of the source. So that's how we measure the brightness of a source. That's how aperture photometry works. So let's do it. Okay, so here I have an image that I made of the moon if you're doing module 1B, or if you're doing module 1C, here's an image I made of Jupiter. Now, Jupiter is very faint, just barely detected, and that's why it looks so noisy. The moon is very bright, easily detected. I've already adjusted the brightness and contrast settings so I can make out the first airy ring. You can see it there ever so slightly. Okay, the first thing we need to do is to adjust the size of the aperture and the annulus for this image. To do that, go to settings up here at the top, go to photometry, and here you have the aperture photometry settings. If you press this button right here, it restores the default values, but those default values are for optical images. And usually with optical images, the aperture, the annulus are much smaller. We need them to be bigger for these radio images. So here are the default settings for your radio images. Here under centroiding radius, change that from five to 28. That means you could be within 28 pixels of the center. When you click on it, it will find the center. Down here, you have the aperture. It's radius, we're also gonna set that to 28. 
that will put that aperture right between the source and the first area ring. And here we have the annulus, inner and annulus outer. For inner, change it from 10 to 50. That's 50 pixels, a radius of 50 pixels. And for outer, 70. That will put the annulus out beyond the first area ring. Okay, so again, 28, 28, 50, and 70. Once you've made those changes, you can go back to the Afterglow Workbench. And the first thing you want to click on is Source Catalog here. And make sure Include Sources from Other Files is turned off because we're going to make measurements in multiple files, multiple images, and we don't want them appearing in the other images simultaneously. So turn that off, then come down here to photometry. And all you have to do is click within 28 pixels of the center. It centroided it, put down the aperture, and it put down the annulus. And it did the calculation. Here under flux, the first number is your brightness measurement. The second number is an error bar. And we're just going to ignore that error bar. It's actually underestimated. In optical images, each pixel is independent of the pixel next to it. But in this radio image, we had to reconstruct the values in all the gaps between the measurements. And so the pixels are correlated. And that means the actual error bar is bigger than what you see here. But we're not going to worry about the error bar. We're going to focus here on the flux. Now, the unit here is it's already in noise source units. You may remember at the beginning of your observation and the end of your observation, we turn on this artificial noise source in the receiver. We figure out how strong it is and divide all of our data by it. When we divide our data by it, that means our data is now in the unit of the noise source. So the total flux in here is 4,309 noise source units. So in the module, I provide a link to a spreadsheet, and you can write that down. This was the moon. 4309, I'm going to stick that right here. 4309, again, that's in noise source units. It's a kind of a meaningless unit. It depends on how strong the noise source is in the receiver. That's why we're going to have to calibrate it. Also, we want to write down the date and time of the observation. And you can get that by going to the GBO data page. Go to Skynet, click on your observation, click on the GPO data, and it's right here. This was taken January 22nd at 2220. Okay. I can go up to this Jupiter image and just show you by comparison. It came in at only 17. So Jupiter is much, much fainter than the moon for those of you doing module 1C. Now, I'm going to go to my calibrator. My calibrator for the moon observation was the Crab Nebula. So here it is. I'm going to click on that one. And it came in at 4421. So here's calibration source 1, 4421. 4421, yep. And the time, date and time of that observation was 122-2139. So taken just a little bit before. Taken before, but you know, within an hour of the moon observation. So it should be a good calibrator. The two appear to be pretty close in brightness value. Okay, so we've measured the brightness, but it's in an arbitrary noise source unit, and we want to put it into a physical unit 
the Jansky. So step one is to divide these two by each other. You see the equation here? The moon flux in calibration source units, our calibration source here, the crab, is the brightness of the moon in the arbitrary unit divided by the brightness of the crab in the arbitrary unit. So I'll show you in the spreadsheet. Do equal this divided by that calculates it for you. They're, as I said, they're very close in brightness, it turns out. Okay. The moon is 97% the brightness of the crab. So now we just need to know how bright is the crab in our physical unit, Jansky's. Okay. And a Jansky is a well-defined unit. It's 10 to the minus 26 watts per square meter per hertz. So it's an MKS unit. For that, there's another link. It's here in the spreadsheet. It's also in the lab. It takes you to our graphing tools. Go down to radio. And for, in this particular example, the crab, that's Taurus A. But you may have done Cygnus. You may have done Virgo. Whichever calibration source you did, that's the one you want to click. And then upload the file here. Let's see. It was this one, okay? And that loads in the start and stop frequencies that you chose, also the date of the observation. The date doesn't really matter with Cygnus and Virgo. Those are always constant. Taurus is fading very, very slowly. So an approximate date is good uh, to have but it can be very approximate. It's not changing very much. And then you compute, and here that first number is the flux density of the Crab Nebula, in this case, Taurus A, 847.1. I'm gonna go back to my spreadsheet, 847.1. And so the brightness of the moon is equal to, you can see this here, the moon's brightness in Jansky's is equal to the moon's brightness in calibration source units times the brightness of the calibration source in Jansky's. It's equal to this times this. So here you have the moon it clocked in at 825 Jansky's for me. For you, it may be different because sometimes the moon's a little bit closer, sometimes it's a little bit farther away. It's orbiting the Earth, but the orbit is slightly eccentric. So sometimes it's closer and brighter, sometimes it's farther away and fainter. And we'll take that into account when we calculate the temperature a little bit later on.